It's back, the return of the prestigious Learfield IMG College Director's Cup, honoring college sports excellence across all competitive divisions, both men's and women's sports. Follow along with L Director's Cup on Twitter or online to see which schools will be taking home a first place trophy in June for their season long success. Learfield IMG College Director's Cup, a premier institutional award jointly launched in 1993 by USA Today and NACTA. And back to the goaltending, too. You know, uh, Cameron Rowe, uh, during a Zoom conference recently, said he thinks right now that the competition is tight for playing time. Would you agree with that? You mentioned Robbie Baydoun would probably get the first crack at it, but it sounds like all three of it have been pretty good so far. They have. They have. And again, you know, we're going based off of scrimmages and, and, and uh, you know, what we've done as a, as a group together. So, so I think when you get in real competition, you'll see more of it. I think the experience that Robbie brings to the table, you know, sets him up for the best opportunity to grab hold of that position and, and make a pretty good run with it. But, but Cam has been been outstanding. He's had some practices where you you, you look at you know the other coaches and you say, did he let a goal in today? I mean, he's he's been really solid. And Ben Ben has, has been spectacular as well. And one player I just want to mention because we talked about our offensive players and you mentioned a few other guys, but but Roman Shine right. had a phenomenal year last year. Oh, he was your team MVP. Yeah. Let's not you know forget him in the mix of, of what we have offensively to offer. Uh, he gives me, from the bench standpoint, uh, lots of options. You know, you can play him on your first line, your second line, your third line. You can play him on your checking line. Um, so his contributions last year, from start to finish to the year, was an MVP season. And, uh, you know, so he'll he'll be a big part of our group, offensive group as well. Yeah, you know, your power play was almost 20% last year, but it can be better. And you lose your point guy, Wyatt Kalnuck, who signed with Chicago Blackhawks, your team captain. Um, so, but you, again, it's back to the forwards, what I said before. You have different pieces to do some different things with that power play as long as you share the puck. Yeah, we do. We do. What, what I really want to establish this year is a, a shot from the point. I know Wyatt was, last year, was a, a, a great defender, a good defenseman from the ability to be able to walk the line and be able to get shots through. I think one of the things, especially early in the year last year, you know, Wyatt had Turcotte on one side, Caulfield on the other thing, and he forgot how great he was and wanted to share that puck all the time and, and wasn't real disciplined on being able to get, especially not probably, probably first 10 games. And then as the season progressed, he got better at it. But, but I think from our standpoint this year, you know, there's, uh, there's probably power plays you're going to look on the ice and see five forwards. I think, uh, you know, there's really real good possibility that I think the, the defenseman there that stepped up in the, in the practices so far, Ty Emerson, uh, I'm going to give him a, a really good look on the power play. Uh, his his uh, willingness to shoot pucks, uh, his ability to find ways to get it through the first layer of shot blockers uh, is has been really good uh, so far. And uh, so he'll get a chance back there. But you, we mentioned all those players, you know, Ty Weiss. I mean, you look at talk about a guy that, that you know, potentially could have a phenomenal year in practice. You know, you, you got to put him and Caulfield together. You put him and Holloway together. You put him and Ashan, you know, as two of your three players in a line or him and Weisbach. You know, he, he knows how to use his line mates maybe as, as well as any player in college hockey. And and uh, so he's he, he looks outstanding. I think the confidence that he has right now um, sets him up for a really big, you know, year as well. Um, so so I, I like what we got. You know, it's a little bit different type of team than we had last year. Last year, we relied heavily on, on our freshmen. We, you look at what we asked of Turkow, you look at what we asked of, of Cole uh, and Dylan, you know, uh, yeah. that's a lot. And this year, I think we're a more mature team. I think we're a more balanced team. Uh, and I think that, that uh, the guys that battled through last year's um, you know, ups and downs, lots of downs, uh, I think are ready to, to, to uh, move forward and, and, uh, and, and have a really solid year. All right, a couple more for you. College hockey as a whole, no, you know, for the longest time, if the game was tied after regulation, it was a five-on-five five overtime, and then that was it, the game winner, loser, or tie. Then there, there was five-on-five, three-on-three, or the shootout was introduced. Now no more five-on-five, three-on-three, before a shootout and you know the NHL does it that way I'm do you have a problem with that no I I uh, 
you know, been hoping that we've got, you know, the last four years, I've been hoping that we would get to the same format as the NHL. A couple of things. One, you play 60 minutes of five on five, and then you ask your, you know, your best players because you don't want to lose that point. So you're, you're demanding an extra five minutes of five on five play. And then they jump into three on three. And then you play back to back games. I mean, it's a lot of hockey uh, in important situations for those players. So I think going right to the three on three is the right thing to do. Uh, it follows the model of the NHL. It's what our guys watch on TV every single night when they, they watch the highlights. They look at the three on threes to see, see how that's being played. It's exciting for the fans. Uh, so I'm happy uh, we are going to that format. Um, and, you know, like you know, you mentioned our, our conference, and, and we, we bring this up a lot with our guys. If you look at all our games last year and, and the year before, you go into the third period, and there's very few games where there's most of the games are tied or one goal. Uh, I, I think it was 90% of our games were either tied or, or one goal one way or the other. Uh, in the third period so so those games uh you know and the competitiveness of the difference between winning and losing um those are things that we have to understand we've been talking about them a lot as a team uh, so far this year is the difference between winning and losing is very fine in, in in our conference and the teams that we play i look at notre dame i know what to expect out of notre dame because they do it over and over and over again you, you go play at penn state you know exactly what you're going to get they do the same over and over we have to have that same mentality of finding what it is for us that gives us the best chance to win every night and stick with it. I think that's that's one of the things last year you saw us on a night come out and, and not let the other team touch the puck for 40 minutes. We, we dominated the puck possession and had great chances. And all of a sudden, you know, we get into a lull where we'd be sitting back or, or, or whatever. We you show we show different signs of, of what we were as a team. This year, I want to see us be more consistent on, on who I think we can be. And that's one one I think we can be hard to play against. I talked about our decor on, on how I think they will be around our net. And, and now I want us to, to, to establish an identity offensively, too, uh, that is a little bit different than having all these skilled players that make these plays for tapping goals. I think there's other ways that, that we have to uh, establish ourselves as being a team committed to, to, to finding ways to, to, to be consistent on, on how we play. All right. Last one for you, too. I mean, there's so many things we can talk about, but it, it was decided that uh, you'll play your home games this season at Le bon Arena rather than the Cole Center. Maybe soon we'll be able to see fans uh, in the stands for every sporting event. We'll get back to normal. Uh, but uh, for those that haven't been to a game at Le bon Arena where the Wisconsin women uh, play, you know, they're five-time national champs. In fact, the preseason number one in the U.S. College Hockey Online poll. But Le bon Arena is a, a great rink to watch a game even without fans. It's loud. Um, and uh, it sounds like your players are, are fired up to play there while they'd love to be at the Cole Center. Le bon Arena is not a set, bad second option. No, it's a great option. It's the rink we've been practicing on all along. And, and I brought it up to the players, uh, you know, a month ago saying, hey, guys, what do you think if, if, if uh, we're not allowed to have fans? What do you think about playing in Le bon? And I, I brought it to them first before I went to them and said, hey, this is what our plan is. And, and they were like, hey, that'd be really cool. You know, because it, it's more of an intimate, tighter building. It, it would mm -hmm. be, uh, um, you know, I, I, it's smaller. It's a little bit smaller ice size, ice surface wise. Um, they get excited about it. And, and uh, you know, I think it's better if you don't have fans and playing in a, in, a, in a smaller arena than you want a 15,000 seat coal center and there's no fans in there. It'd kind of be, you come flying out of the tunnel and I think it'd take a little bit of the pizzazz away from the, from the yeah. game. So I, I think this is a better setup for us. Um, you know, we've watched lots of women's games in there that that uh, uh, you know have been really exciting over the past few years, and and obviously uh, for us, you know, having a chance to to have a building like this, it's something that we want to establish as as you know having a little bit of a home ice advantage, so the rink being a little bit smaller, being used to the, the boards and and, and the way uh, the, you know puck bounces off the wall and stuff will be something that hopefully we can take an advantage of because we've been practicing on it now for a few months. So so I'm excited about it. We're going to play, you know, I, I think the schedule, you know, we'll play probably get six games in here, uh, you know, in a pretty quick period of time. And, and uh, you know, and then like you said, if, if it opens up where we are able to have fans in here by the end of the year, then we'll move back to the Bowl Center and, and uh, um, start playing hockey over there.